Yes, yes. You wanted it? Well, you got it, Jackson. I'm back. It's great to see you, Tim. Thank you. It's a balloon party on 101 ESPN. It's great to see you. You look beautiful. Your hair is so thick and lush. Thank you. Yeah, you look like you. you had a, an evening last night. Did you stay up? Did you have Purdue in seven and a half or something? No, all my uh, action ended in the first half. But what was your action? Cashed. Uh, I had a little parlay, which I don't usually do. No, the smart betters play parlays. It's just a two-leg parlay. I had the under in the first half, which said 67 points. Finished at 66. Oh. Absolute miracle. It what should, a dopamine rush you had. It had no reason to go under. It had no reason. I had UConn minus three and a half in the first half. Both hit. Let's get paid. Look at you. Yeah. So after that, about halfway through the second half, I was like, all right, this game's over. I'm getting to bed. Yeah, that was kind of the way that things played out. I enjoyed the uh, Cardinal comeback and then the unfortunate top mm. of the 10th inning mm. and uh, not able to capitalize in the bottom of the 10th on the Goldschmidt hit. Scott at third, no on Arnado. That'll wrap her up. And the Cardinals drop to five and six on this young season. And we'll have to navigate Zach Wheeler tonight and the Philadelphia Phillies to avoid a three-game skid. Jackson, uh, it is good to be back. I was at my sister's wedding this weekend out of town. What a wonderful celebration it was. I returned. Uh, we were in Hilton Head, South Carolina. You ever been to Hilton Head? I have. Have you really? Yeah. Have you done ball striking down there? Uh, I have. Now, this was... Harbortown? This was... I was in the seventh grade, so I've been just uh, 12 years old, and it was around the uh, the winter holidays, and uh, it was lovely. It was it was just warm enough to, like, be outside and enjoy it, but, like, too cold to go in the ocean, mm -hmm. but we still got to play around the golf, and I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a lovely, lovely area of South Carolina. Now, the issue, for those who have made that trip, is... There aren't any nonstops from St. Louis to Hilton Head, uh, Hilton Head specifically. And then you have Savannah, Georgia, which is usually the place people would fly into. I've done the Charleston thing. That's not ideal because there isn't an interstate that right. takes you there and you're driving on two lane and it's not. It's hard to get to North and South Carolina parts of it. If you're not going to Charlotte, it's hard to get to the Carolinas. So yesterday our travel began about 24 hours ago with an hour or so drive. And I have a six year old and a two year old and uh, a wife who is candidly lucky to have somebody as attractive as me. I hope that doesn't come off wrong. Though. The truth hurts sometimes. Thank you. And so we begin the drive to Savannah. I'm in a minivan, but it has <laughs> rims, and they're 22s, it's and they're spinning. spinning. Yep, yep. And, you, you know, they're two hours, flight to Chicago, because there isn't a Savannah to St. Louis nonstop. Mm -hmm. Layover in Chicago, 90 minutes, you know, quick flight from Chicago to St. Louis. Uh, and then all we were now, it's now it's six o'clock. Mm -hmm. We left at 10 central, mm -hmm. six o'clock. Got the two year old, the six year old, the wife, again, very fortunate to have me and, uh, go to the parking garage to get the vehicle and the, the car battery is dead as a doornail. Just brutal. Uh, brutal. After a long day of travel, nonetheless. Oh, oh this just sucks. Sucks. Oh. I hate to hear that. I hate to hear it. Oh. I was on full tilt. Oh, you know one of the sponsors of this program, James Carlton? I texted him, and within 25 minutes, no B, I mean, James texted me back right away, of course, but within 25 minutes, the gentleman's there, puts the jumper cables on the vehicle, mm -hmm. and he has me start the car, car starts right away, and he is gone within 60 seconds <laughs> He's like a, with $100 of of mine. Yeah, it's like a, he's like Batman. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I blame myself because you weren't there to blame, and That's usually right. I would blame you. Right. Uh, there are theories that my children... Potentially, the six-year-old is, is the focal of the focal point of the investigation. Did something with like the dome light, yeah. and that drained the battery. Someone doesn't close the car door all the way, and the light know. might stay on. Oh my goodness! It sucks. So therefore, that has a chain reaction on getting the kids to bed, eating the whole thing. So listen, my talent usually allows me to overcome obstacles such as that travel day yesterday. And I'm going to try to shine bright like a diamond, mm -hmm. despite the fact that that's what I dealt with yesterday. Because I know you have prepared what you call the Little Piddles Maverick Macro? Uh, Ma Little Piddles. Orgy? Little Piddles the Macro Maverick. Oh, you are the Macro Maverick. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, self, self titled. So since we haven't done the program in a week, I want to I wanna try to have 
my Tiger Woods, Tory Pines playing on one leg, coming back to beat Rocco Mediate in a Monday 18-hole playoff day. My Michael Jordan flu game. My Jack Young blood, broken arm game. Whatever. We, 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 we. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want to do here today on Balloon Party. It's up to you to get the ball in my hands and see if I can hit the shots, even though I'm on fumes. I want that opportunity to have my day like Jordan did against the Blazers. Am I right on that? Is that against the Blazers? Well, against the Jazz was a flu game. Blazers was the shrugging shoulders yes. with the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Clyde Drexler's head. Yeah, he was unhappy with Clyde. Mm. He said something and he took it personally. Imagine that. Jackson, go ahead, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the Little Piddles. Macro Maverick? Yeah, well, allow me to be the producers that worked for Michael Jordan on that mm. Netflix documentary, mm. and I'll hand you the iPad. Yeah, and hang. I can just smirk at Gary Payton <laughs> and Isaiah Thomas. Oh, and man. George Carl didn't say hi at the steakhouse. <laughs> George Carl. He took it from nowhere. Uh, UConn captured back-to-back titles for the first time since Billy Donovan and the Florida Gators. Not only did they win back-to-back titles, but they also never really had a sweat. In their 12 tournament games combined from this year and last, they won each by double digits. And more so than that, in the last 11 tournament games, they never even trailed at halftime. First, can you remember a run by any team in in any sport as dominant as the playoff run by the Huskies. Second, Dan Hurley seems to be a polarizing figure. Do you think his behavior is just another notch on the I'm better than you smarmy coach in college sports bedpost? God, I like this. I feel like this is a feel thing mm. that the 1998 Yankees. Yeah. Call. Sculpt. Really, you agree with that? I, that kind of predates you. But I, I guess I you knew know that they their like, lore. Yeah, they just ripped they just through. Skull pound. I know they swept the Padres to win the World Series, but I feel like that's a team that that is because you'll have great regular season teams. Look at the Dodgers recently that fall in the playoffs. In college football, you can't really have it because it's one game. There were plenty of great teams who just destroyed teams in their bowl game to win the national championship, but you didn't have a playoff run like you did with the NCAA tournament or a Stanley Cup playoff run. I mean, even those Bulls teams that we were making reference to, they, you know, they went to six and seven oh, games. Yeah. I don't know if they even won any of their series in five games. I can't think of, I can't, I can't think of one. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, either way, point being, this, I, I'm so just, I'm, program to not overreact because as I watch Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp screaming uh, right now, who are they screaming at? Stanford Steve? No. I, I got a glare over okay. here. Okay. So well, either really way, tell. they're screaming because because the whole bi- our business is now let's overreact and scream about yeah. things that I, my default position is to underreact just to counter it. <laughs> With that established, this, it was kind of boring because yeah. they were so good. Mm-hmm. And whether it be Illinois, when it was 23-23 in the first half, I'm like, here we go. Mm. And then you saw what wound up happening. Um, Same thing that that took place against Alabama. Alabama hung with them. Probably the closest game they've had in the last two tournaments. And the first, I don't know, 12-ish minutes of that game last night, which I really wasn't, you know, I got home, as I made reference to, from the travel day, and I'm like, I'm not even going to bother with this thing. And then I'm watching, I'm like, man, they are going, this is like blow for blow. Could yeah. we wind up having, and Edie was already at like 12 or 14 points, like eight minutes in or something. I don't know what hook, it was. man. Yeah, he was hitting. I'm like, we could have a classic on our hands. Yep. And then they got a little bit of a buffer right before the half. And I go, I hope that doesn't carry over. And unfortunately, from an exciting standpoint, I had no financial investment or emotional investment. It just became a bore. What it could wind up leading to is... Danny Hurley building himself the new dynasty yeah. because that isn't the same group of players that won last year. And that also is uh, a team that went nine deep and didn't really have a star. I mean, don't get me wrong. They have great players. I'm not saying they don't have great players, but if Purdue won, the story would have been Zach Eady. Yes. UConn winning. That's a team that plays nine, 10 players and does so comfortably and that's one of their strengths. The other thing that I noticed, and this was the first time that I watched outside of the Illinois game with any in- real intent, attention and intent to see what it is that makes them so successful, the offensive sets that they run, that's coaching. Nice. I mean, don't get me wrong. The players have to execute it. 
So what that speaks to is you've got a guy, because you asked about Hurley specifically, who is, is certainly got a Q rating now that he did not have 375 days ago. And a lot of that Q rating, and by that I mean recognizability, is negative. I don't think it's smarmy, but I do think it, it rubs people the wrong way. And yet I'm not necessarily sure what it is about, because he does the, you know, everybody's against us thing, but that's what yeah, Kirby Smart. everybody does. Everybody does that. Chiefs. Uh, I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, him putting his hand on the player. I mean, I don't want to turn this into like a Bobby Knight, Neil Reed thing, but right. but like pushing his guy at the end of the game. And then Matt Painter's like, what are you doing? You could see him in the, in the yeah. angle. I don't know. At the same time, I like when I like when Alabama's killing it because then you have a force. I liked the Yankees in that era, not because I was pulling for the Yankees. I, li- I liked the Patriots in that era, not because I liked the Patriots, because then you have a force. And col- men's college basketball, I think, needs that. Yes. Even though it wasn't exciting, I think this Final Four was a hell of a lot better than last year's Final Four because you had some great teams in there. Uh, last year, kind of like, oh, it's UConn and the random Florida operation along with San Diego State. You know, did UConn really prove that much? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. This year, they had to go through a, a really good Alabama team, granted a four seed. And then I think most people would say either the second or third best team in the country, if you wanted to put Houston there or if you wanted to put Purdue there in order to win the national championship. And so now you kind of go, okay, we've got this to see how they do next year. So it gives you a storyline. And can somebody get them? He's not likable. It creates a villain. Uh, you know, that's the, the star power creates interest. Star power brings in eyes. Lack of star power leads to a lack of eyes. We saw what happened with the women's game. We see what's happening with baseball and the other side of it. This, I think, is a good thing. I don't necessarily know what it is that makes people dislike him. I'm not necessarily a fan by any means, uh, but I enjoy when a star or a team, potential dynasty, emerges in sports. I mean, one of the stories this weekend at Augusta National will be, can Scotty Scheffler continue to do what he's been doing? And if he does that, then all of a sudden you go, we have a more understated, certainly, Tiger Woods emerging. And uh, and then you create a, a dynasty in an individual sport. So from that standpoint, I like it. And I was really beyond impressed by it because they they – you know, Purdue, as Charles Barkley said at the half, first off, this is a really good game. Credit to the coaches, credit to the players. It's a really good game. And then in the second half, they just wore them down, just like they did with Illinois, just like they did with Alabama. It's the same song. They just blew them out. 10 18 in St. Louis. We'll talk Cardinals and the comeback that came up short last night as the game went to extra innings. And the Cardinals now sit at five and six as they deal with the Phillies again. And Zach Wheeler tonight and Sonny Gray's debut on a 65 pitch limit. That's coming your way. And the Little Piddles. Macro Maverick, Macro mm-hmm. Maverick, Maverick Macro mm-hmm. on Balloon, <laughs> Balloon Party 101 ESPN. Well, I just talked about James Carlton and him helping me out last night when, for whatever reason, our car did not start when we got back home at the airport. And James Carlton and the Carlton State Farm Insurance team on it right away, getting back to me. James was willing to, to come and pick me up. I mean, what is this guy doing? He's a, he's a, he's a husband, Jackson. He's a father. And yet he's going to come. That's the kind of service that they provide. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. He's just the best. I am so happy I made the switch five years ago. You make the switch and you will experience the same caliber of customer service that me and my family have experienced ever since we made the switch. Online at carltoninsurance.net. When you make that switch, they do all the paperwork for you. The number is 314-961-4800 or just go online at carltoninsurance.net for home, for life, for auto. It's James Carlton and his incredible team at the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency. 314-961-4800 or go online at carltoninsurance.net. Dot net.
Oh, we almost had a little NBA Western Conference breakdown. Oh, right I was there. so ready to talk about the slumping bucks. I went out to uh, use uh, what Jackson calls the Little Wizards room. That's right. And ran into our director of sales, Keith Krauss. Jackson placing an advertising buy for Sound Story. Yeah. And so Keith and I were talking about that. And I'm like, I still got to try to make it to the restroom and then come back. And, and Mike Ryder uh, and Dan McLaughlin saw me running. And I, w- I would think they had to be impressed by the, the speed. I would say so. Is my mic buzzing? Yeah. It sounds like my Sibian's going off. <laughs> yes. Uh, now it's good. Ah. <laughs> it's the t- should I switch mics? Then I would switch cameras, though. That's all right. Well, anyway, I got back in time to talk about... The Slumping Bucks? The Slumping Bucks. No, the St. Louis Baseball Cardinals. What do we have on the Little Piddles Macro Maverick? Well, last night's game uh, didn't go as planned. Not not bad. So my kind, I guess my my macro question about the Cardinals so far this season is that outside of a, maybe two starts, really, when you look at maybe Zach Thompson's start uh, uh, against the Padres and then uh, Gibson started Sunday against the Marlins, starting pitches are pretty solid. I mean, last night you get six and two-thirds on Miles Michaelis, only two Michaelis runs. Michaelis has been good in two of his three starts, the one against the Dodgers. Yeah, that was yeah that, that one certainly is a, one you put in the bad category. Category. But outside of that, the starting pitching, San Sonny Gray. We'll see what he looks like tonight against Zach 65 Wheeler. 65 pitch limit. 65 pitch limit, and Matt's still on a pitch count. But you've seen pretty good starting pitching. It's the offense that has been a real issue, and it's it's they're not, like, generating any power. Like, they're scoring runs. Fewest home runs in baseball. Yeah, they're scoring runs on, like, wild pitches or catcher interference or yeah. bad tosses to first from the pitcher sacrifices and listen you take runs however you can get them but does the lack of power the lack of real tangible offense so far this season concern you for the cardinals <laughs> this this buzzing we can switch over to mike the camera will move over oh is that right yeah yeah all right if i want to do this you know what this is this is me doing this for the audience yeah i'll, I'll can that mic Tim's off the air right now, so I'll just I'll just I'll narrate the scene going, oh wow, this is a, a new angle for me to look at Tim. Uh, look, look looks hotter. great. You look great. Do I? Yeah. Because of the step stool's over there on on the first mic. We'll, we'll so now move it looks well. Thank you. We'll move in the break. Um so with regard to where things are right now, I thought that this was uh I, I, I could let me ask you this. Hmm. I'm I'm sticking to the Cardinals, but I'm just trying to get a read because I've been out of town for what, five days. Yeah. I get the sense, and maybe I'm wrong because it's not like I'm consuming all cardinal media, but I feel like there's like an effort to like spin positive. Yeah. I'm not talking about you, but I'm t- talking about, and I and, and and I don't know what that's about. Yeah. But 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 by the way, you might go, oh no, that's not the case. Here is X, Y, and Z example, or just X and Y example. I don't know, but that's just the sense that I'm getting. And I don't really know what that's about, but I'm just making that observation in general. And, and you've been in St. Louis the last five days where I was not. And it's not like, you know, I was scrolling Twitter mm-hmm. during the wedding or anything like that to know. But I just, I kind of get this, like, this does not appear to be a very good baseball team. And I don't really know why there's this this little game going on. They're about what I thought they would be, which is around a 500 team that's kind of boring. So that's, you know, that's what we got. Yeah. But I, I also do think, I do think something that I said, I think on our last show um, before I went out of town was I do think they really do have a chip on their shoulder because they, the, some of the players or maybe all of them, I don't know, are irritated by the criticism of the team and they are taking that personally, which they could truly use to motivate themselves. And I think they could win the National League Central. But again, that's more about the National League Central and not necessarily about this being a great team, even though I realize the Pirates are off to one of their fast starts that usually tend to be a 20 games under 500 season. Do you see that or do you not see that? I don't want to, you know, I don't want to operate on a premise that may be inaccurate. And I'm pulling up this uh, story from The Athletic. Uh, So up until maybe Friday or around the weekend, 
maybe even Monday, I would have agreed with you. However, the opening day, the home opener numbers came out for viewership, and there's really no way you can spin that into being a— Well, that, uh, that's, the fa that's fan reaction. I'm talking about, like, a, a sense, like, media-wise, trying to spin positives. Right. right, and so I think it was Jeff Jones yesterday. I could be wrong, and so I probably shouldn't even cite this, but I will because I saw the tweet last night. Somebody in— baseball media relating to the Cardinals tweeted about it's my, one of the most gorgeous nights for baseball and we'll probably get all summer in St. Louis uh, against a really good team and this is the there's just nobody here there's no one here 32,000 was what they announced yeah so and, and granted Monday night school night I guess the NCAA tournament but I'd be surprised if that would really put a dent in the numbers uh but yeah, I mean, there's this. So I saw that yesterday. I was like, okay, this is like a very earnest, like, hey, look, I mean, there's this, this is the facts. This is a beautiful night. You're getting a great team in town and there's nobody at the ballpark. And so that, that, that to me speaks to a large sample size of the public's response. And one of the things that I have said throughout the course of the last few months is that there is not necessarily as much anger locally as there is apathy. And apathy is actually more dangerous than anger. Right. And so th the people are just resigned to eh, this is kind of how I am with what you go. What do you th what do you think so far? Because yeah, minus Gibson on Sunday and minus Michaelis to open up the season, and I suppose you could start the, the, the site the Thompson start. Uh, overall, it's been you know the rotation. Yeah, sure, you're right about about that. I mean, they've played 11 games, and for the most part, the starts have either been really good in the mm -hmm. case of Stephen Matz, yeah. and you haven't had Sonny Gray yet. But I, I I don't think there's, like, if you're dreaming as a baseball fan, if that, that's the right word to use, or if you just want to talk through it like a businessman, if you want to look at it like the ceiling for the team, what charges you up to get you dreaming or visualizing a ceiling of greatness or even excitement? And I don't know what's there. For me, for me personally, it would be a young player or young players starting to show signs of greatness that's what would excite me um so for example we talked about at the start of the year victor scott that has not come to fruition in any form nope. um but that kind of thing you know where it's come from so far the uh, backup catcher yeah ivan herrera right yeah he's been far and away and the they're putting him in the middle of the lineup too on top of that and by just a brief aside i brought this up on tma uh-huh as i'm flying back yesterday i see the cardinal lineup i'm like oh good Contreras is back in there that'll help and then, then I saw Herrera was in line. I go, oh, I guess, you know, so he must have taken a step back with the hand injury. And then Ali Morales said, well, he wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. How, who else has control of the lineup card? We were kind of joking on TMA while you were out that the, when the home opener, they announced the game plan coach. And we were wondering what the hell that means. And so one would think maybe the game plan coach would have some help in the lineup card. Who is in, who is in charge of the lineup card? Like, can take, is this like, a, like an Afton Athletic Association when I wasn't going to start and I tried to, like, pencil my name in? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was for like, the, for the Kudas team? Yeah, we're in a, an age of AI, but we still have a handwritten lineup card that may be right or may be wrong. I have no idea what the hell's going on there. So, uh, either way, I, uh, I I read this from The Athletic this morning on their power rankings. Uh, Jackson, I love myself a good power ranking. I, I just really love myself. Mm. But the Braves are one, Dodgers two, Yankees are three. I don't think that's particularly surprising. Uh, but then you have to scroll all the way down to 21 to find the St. Louis Cardinals and what the athletics writers write uh, the following uh, their last power ranking they had the Cardinals at 17 last week so they've dropped them to 21 early season overreaction this team needed more than just pitching 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 and even that isn't going great even if Sonny Gray twirls a 65 pitch perfect game tonight in his pitch count limited Cardinal debut St. Louis has gotten disappointing results so far from its rotation the primary area addressed this offseason, yet the lineup with a couple of contributors injured has been especially or has been equally concerning. As of Monday, the Cardinals had half their lineup fighting the Mendoza line, were tied for the fewest homers in the National League, seven, and had been caught stealing more times three than they were successful twice. This team's in trouble. That's from The Athletic this morning. And so that that that's the national perspective. Again, that's one perspective. Let's make that clear. And then you have the fan lackluster interest in in the team and it's like okay that that kind of matches what my assessment of it is and again you give me a team to, to win the national league central it's kind of like just i mean just 
grab a team, it's like a pool. And you're like, okay, I got the Cubs, fine. Oh, I got the Pirates, fine. I got the Brewers, fine. I got the Cubs. It doesn't really matter because I don't think you're looking at like a 95-win team in the Central. Right. But I'm just like this. This is this is what you got, and that's the thing that sucks about it is they're still in this hybrid mode. I wish it would be, and it kind of goes back to the thing that we talk about with the Blues. It's like, are you rebuilding? Or are you not? I mean, just then then commit to a path and stick to it, and also be honest with your fan base of what you're doing. And if you're talking about a bigger concern than just this season. Hey, Nolan Arnato, I realize he's got a bunch of hits, but he didn't have a lot of power with mm-hmm. those hits. Uh, Goldschmidt uh, had a big first game against the Dodgers, but hasn't had a much going. He got a hit last night in the 10th inning. If those guys are in the midst of the decline that could have been foreshadowed by last year's disappointing year following their great year in 2022, then that's a big problem for this year. Uh, and then also, considering Arnato is under contract for a while, then that could be a problem. Goldschmidt's off your books, assuming you're not going to do a thank you contract extension uh, after this year. All that's going to do is just make me more irritated that they didn't trade him last year at the right. deadline. So, yeah, I just, the, the, you know, I, I don't, listen, they're going to have games where they look great. And there's, they, tonight might be one of them. Hey, they beat Zach Wheeler. And Sonny Gray deals for, you know, however many innings he can get out of, you know, I mean, he's going to have to, I mean, if he goes five innings, that means he was incredibly efficient. Yeah, for real. So more likely it's three or four innings. Hey, that's outstanding. But then that taxes the bullpen at the same time. They're off on Thursday before heading to Arizona. I just, I don't know. I mean, there's nothing to get really excited about to me. Um, To me, there are things that, that I go, hey, there's some issues here that are concerning some of the young guys you were hoping to come into their own it's 11 games in but still jordan walker's been here now for a while at some point you'd like to see something to show some signs of uh, of growth and then your core guys in goldschmidt and arenado so yeah if you would have told me 11 games in the guy i'm going to be most excited about is herrera i'd be like oh boy you yeah. know and steven matz <laughs> If you had that parlay going, God right. bless you. Yeah, and even the power that they're getting, I mean, back-to-back games where the home run hits the glove of the outfielder. Mm-hmm. You know, not crushing balls by any means. Jordan Walker's still yet to hit a home run. Nolan Gorman. Yeah, it's won. interesting because Brad Thompson made the observation on Donovan's ball last night that the ball's been flying in Bush Stadium in the early part of the, the year. I mean, granted, it's only at this point four games, but, um, you know, that that ball, I didn't think that was out off the bat last night, but it carried, it carried, yeah. and then was caught at the wall but uh yeah to not have power when you have the ball flying and uh brad thompson's uh opinion and there's a guy who who's pitched in that ballpark which is not known as a hitter's park and they're still not getting the power so yeah i just think we're probably hey and if they wind up winning 90 plus games and some guys come along then great but this is kind of what i thought it was i think the bigger story is the St. Louis area and Cardinal fans throughout the country, and specifically this area of the country, indifference. And what does that say to the organization? And you you cite Jeff Jones of uh, the Belleville News Democrat making the observation that, hey, you got a perfect night for baseball here and a really good team and in town, and, you know, better than just anybody here. Yeah. What's going on? That's a topic of conversation. That's a real conversation because that has to resonate uh, down at Bush Stadium in those offices. Your thoughts are welcome. Uh, text it, 314-399-646, Air Comfort Service text line. The YouTube chat welcomes you as well uh, for the 101 ESPN YouTube channel. Tim McKernan and Jackson Burkett with you. The program is called Balloon Party. It is driven by Munganess, St. Louis Acura, Munganess, Burkhardt, Alton, Toyota on 101 ESPN and the 101 ESPN YouTube channel.
Munganass St. Louis Acura and Munganass Burkhardt Alton Toyota presenting sponsor of Balloon Party on 101 ESPN and the 101 ESPN YouTube channel and also the place I go and my family goes to get our cars. New cars, pre-owned cars, they've got an incredible selection for you on their lot and you can check it out without even going there right now. Just go to stlouisacura.com or altontoyota.com and work with the best. And the best is Jamie Burkhardt, Clayton Patterson, Peter Munganass, and then in their service department, Ryan Cyberg. Even if you didn't get your car from Munganast, get your car serviced at Munganast St. Louis Acura and Munganast Burkhard Alton Toyota. And you can call or text a number they have set up just for our listeners. That number is 314-252-0029. And they will get back to you quick, fast, and in a hurry with any questions you may have. It's the place you will want to do business with, not just today, but going forward. It's Munganast St. Louis Acura and Munganast Burkhard Alton Toyota. Online at stlouisacura.com and altontoyota.com. This is Action Jackson with a Sports Center update driven by Johnny Landoff Chevrolet and Johnny Landoff Auto.
Flex. The Cardinals lose to the Phillies last night. Final score of 5-3. to three. They will take on the Phillies again tonight. The debut of Sonny Gray as he takes on Zach Wheeler and the Phillies. First pitch at 645 this evening. And then tomorrow, the Blues are back in action, taking on the Blackhawks. You can catch that game right here on the Home of the Blues. 101 ESPN pregame starts 6 p.m. Puck drop at 7 p.m. That was another Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff. Find new roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. You kidding me? Welcome back. This is Balloon Party 101 ESPN. My name is Timothy Michael McKernan. That's Jackson Bennett Burkett. And we welcome you to participate in our program that airs for one hour. And it's called Balloon Party. And you can do so by texting in 314-399-9646. Those are the Air Comfort Service text line phone numbers. And, uh, and then you can also participate in the chat. And I see Tiny PP is in there holding it down with uh, Chris Turner, Jeff R., and, and you say it's John Scores, Jackson? Yeah, I've always said John Scores. John Scores. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, oh, no, I'm not reading that. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I just open it up, and then I think I can just read it, and it's just it's be- in the best. Um, people giving their reasons for not being into the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. One of the things I have theorized... And we just did this uh, on TMA with uh, Ed Herman of Brown and Crippen, who comes into the program and uh, talks on Tuesdays, is I think something that happened, and I don't know how many people can relate to this, is they got frustrated with their television provider. They used to be able to watch Cardinals games. Then now the, the with service that they're with don't carry bally's. Right. And then the pandemic happened and they didn't have baseball up until a later portion of the summer in 2020 with the abbreviated season. And either because of one or because of both, they found that they didn't really miss watching baseball like they would have thought they would. And then over time, there's been some attrition and people are just going, yeah, I'm just not, I'm just not as into it as I once was. And baseball can't do anything about 2020, but that speaks to if that is true. And I do believe that that because I can speak to it from my standpoint. Like last night, I'm like, I want to watch. I'm watching the the NCAA tournament game on YouTube TV, which is what I use for most of my. But I also subscribe to Spectrum, so I can legally anyway watch Bally's. And so I'm like, oh, I want to see, you know, they're pulling away. UConn's pulling away. Let me flip over. Okay, it's going to be, you know, is is it that big of a deal? It's like three buttons. But it's not just like switching a channel and going back. It's just a dumb inconvenience thing. Now, that's, that's, I mean, I might be the only, you know, dumb crap in St. Louis who's paying for YouTube TV and Spectrum. But the point being, there are plenty of people who love whatever service they have, and they're like, I'm done chasing them around because I'm going to switch, and then they're going to not be on, take your pick of whatever service it is. And so once that happened, people go, you know what? I don't miss it that much, and they're not putting out a product that excites me enough to want to buy it. Right. So, you know, I don't know, because Apple doesn't make their numbers public with, with MLS, how successful that is. I know it's not bringing in as much money as what the Cardinals have been making from Bally's and before that Fox Sports Midwest. But the convenience of what MLS has with Apple TV is glorious. I can watch it whether I'm at home or I can watch it on my phone any like this weekend, anytime I want. And baseball Really, and this isn't like needs to because it's inconveniencing me. I don't really care. I, I'm, I'm like I said, the one dumb crap paying for both Spectrum and YouTube TV. Whatever, it's my job. But for baseball's health, it has to do something about this television situation. It has to. If you have a market like St. Louis, and yes, I realize last year was a dumpster fire, but it was the first real, real dumpster fire since 1990, as far as a last place team goes. Uh, And the first losing season in 16 years at the time. And you have the lack of enthusiasm. Yes, you can go, well, the team isn't that exciting. And I understand that, but I've seen plenty of teams that weren't real exciting, but there still was some enthusiasm, at least at the outset of the season. And you don't have that going on right now. So I theorize that in part, it's this convoluted television situation that is playing a role in it. And it's highlighted more in a market like St. Louis 
in a region like the one we have here in the Midwest and the Southeast with Cardinal fans going, yeah, I don't know, I'm just not as interested as I was. Because this team has as good a chance, in my opinion, as any to win the National League Central, even if you're not that excited by it. They're in a terrible division, so they got a chance to go to the postseason. And yet you have the Cardinals getting beat by the Battle Hawks and Caitlin Clark. Yep. I mean, holy crap. That is that is an eye-opening statistic. Your thoughts are welcome. 314-399-9646. And, of course, you're welcome to talk it over in the YouTube chat. 101 ESPN YouTube channel. Come on in. The water is warm. Uh, let me see uh, we got here. Never thought I'd say this, but I agree with you. Oh, that's nice. Hey, you know what? We'll take it. We're gonna take. We're gonna win one person over at a time. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're gonna do. Brick by brick. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you guys always bringing up the television part of it. I haven't watched games regularly since cutting cable in 2015. I'm a millennial. Well, usually, those are my people. <laughs> uh, I'm a millennial, so maybe not the target audience. But I was a big baseball fan, and now I only sit and watch a game if I go to one or I watch it at a bar. That's from the 314. I think the kind of nature of baseball, in a way is you can follow the Cardinals just by looking at the box scores. Like, it's it's a game more so than football, hockey, basketball, where... I, can... I agree with that, but, 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 but I'm, and I'm not saying this, I, I'm saying this from a good place. This isn't like a, hey, 26-year-old, you know, because I, I dealt with that when I was the 26-year-old, and I'm like, okay, F off. <laughs> You know, because uh, I was I was like, I'm down there. and I'm actually in the same age as these guys on the team and I know them. So I kind of know you know, I don't know more about the game per se, but I know what's going on more because I get a chance to talk to them. Uh, I, I don't I don't think that that's probably the case in a lot of markets, more than half of Major League Baseball's markets. But this is a different situation here where people appreciate and love breaking down the finer points of the game and talk baseball like other parts of the country talk about the weather mm -hmm. you know it's like oh how about the cardinals oh how about this weather that that's and i'm not saying that that's gone but i would say that, like the cardinals suck and i'm like well the cardinals don't necessarily suck they're just kind of blah yeah rolling in neutral that's that's what it is and so i just that, that's that that's what takes me back to the trade deadline last year and again anytime we talk about it if r not or goldschmidt said hey we're not going anywhere the cardinals couldn't do anything about it but this is this is this is this is why I think there may be peak frustration with sports fans in St. Louis because the Blues are kind of in a, you know, spot mm. and probably not going to turn the corner on that spot next year either. And deep down, I think Cardinal fans know that barring a real surprise, this team's in a bit of a spot as well. So while you're in a spot, you want to see your Jake Neighbors emerge. Not to say Jake Neighbors is going to be a god, but I think Jake Neighbors has the makings of a great hockey presence in St. Louis and a leader that people can start to relate to over the next few years as right. being one of the, the faces of the franchise, even if he isn't like a superstar. You want to see Walker or Wynn or, you know, not to say Victor Scott was a highly touted prospect, but a guy like him get his chance and capitalize on it and not a guy who, even if he is great, they're not going to play him because they're, they're bankrolling Wilson Contreras. Or if they are going to play him, that means Wilson Contreras is the DH, and now that means that somebody who would have been taking DH at bats isn't going to get in there. Uh, so that creates a conundrum. And then it also can speak to, well, if this guy's so damn good, why'd you go out and sign Contreras? Once again, speaking to the Cardinal talent evaluation. So, yeah, I think there's a source of frustration right now that people want to see change. And I think because they're not getting it, they're going, okay, well, I'm just going to stay away. And I'm not that interested. I'm not going to protest by not showing up. I'm just not interested. And that's a bigger issue. They're angry in Oakland. There are a lot of apathetic fans in St. Louis. 1050, time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers. This is Balloon Party on 101 ESPN.
Welcome back. This is Balloon Party, 101 ESPN. My name is Timothy Michael McKernan. That's Jackson Bennett Burkett. Jackson, we have five minutes. Maximize those. Optimize those minutes with this Little Piddles Macro Maverick Tuesday. Sure. Why do we feel the need to diminish greatness in sports when we talk about sports, with sports discourse? It seems to me that when somebody or some team is unequivocally great, there seems to be a contingency of people who look for any slip-up or things to ridicule. Let's psychoanalyze this, if you agree with my premise. Why does this go on? Do you think the part of the reason is our constant appetite to compare across time and history? When did it start, and do you think it is fueled by social media? Of course I do. I figured you would. But I do, but, but it's, actually, you know what, I, I'm going to I'm gonna strip the social and I'm just going to go media. Okay. Uh, I, I really do put a lot of the problems on the media, of which, of course, I am a part and I'm, I'm well aware. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this, is, this has been going on well before, say, cable news or social media, and that is uh, lifting someone up and then enjoying tearing them down and then enjoying the comeback story uh take your pick of whomever you would want so you know if you want to we were making reference to 30 for 30 earlier on and so jordan got too good his father dies oh well it had to be because of his gambling and then therefore he goes to play baseball and it had to be because the nba suspends him and now he's back and now we lift him back up tiger woods he's so great he's so great oh he was sleeping with however many women well now he's you know he's out tiger woods 2019 19, yeah. you know i mean it's, it's 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 this this goes on beyond sports um but i think that at its core uh, similar to cable news with politics you have to fill these shows including this one i suppose although i really haven't made my living talking sports hardcore per se but so you, so you come up with takes and the takes are oftentimes just air Sur surface level and then they become narratives that when facts present themselves that go against the narrative they become hard to believe because the mind of the audience has already been told that that is not the way things actually are and so you must be making it up you must be uh coming up with some kind of bs because uh you have an agenda and so i don't know what, what are you talking about caitlin clark is that what that's is that part the, of is that the yeah, birth of this story well what, what are the complaints about caitlin clark i don't i don't know i don't know like i said i've been away in south carolina for the last five days so you're kind of talking to like uh, phil hartman's caveman lawyer right now i don't know what, <laughs> what this technology i'm surprised you even got it i think uh, that predates you i know about phil hartman and his tragic ending that was, that's a wild troy mcclure tim you may remember me from uh the yes, yeah, so the Caitlin Clark thing over the weekend, uh, Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi um, have their alt broadcast of the uh, women's tournament. They were kind of saying some things like she's in for a rude awakening come her time in the WNBA. Um, people took Lynette Woodard's comments the wrong way. I'm not going to even include that in there because she was not being disrespectful. I, I know that you're not I don't aware know who Lynette Woodard is, and I don't know what her comments were. She played the Kansas. She uh, had the record, the unofficial record, before they kept the records of the scoring title, and it was more than Caitlin Clark's is currently. But regardless, um, but there's just been people who have who have looked to, to find things in Caitlin Clark's game to rip down, or the fact that she gets mad at the referees like there's not I could show you one million examples of athletes getting mad at referees or officials or umpires so I just feel like and there's always the comparison thing the comparison thing is what really I hate comparisons because in order to have a debate about it you have to tear down someone's greatness and I just I just don't like that I don't like that because anytime you compare two players or two teams one person's going to try to point out the faults and Abraham Lincoln once said Tim that oh my goodness if you look for the bad in Ladies people and gentlemen if you look for the bad in people Oftentimes you're going to find it. Almost always you're going to find it, and that's that? kind of what this is. And it's I just I, I'd rather appreciate greatness. It doesn't make for great sports talk radio. It doesn't make for great TV, but it makes for more honest discourse. And I feel like we need that. Uh, well, the honesty part I agree with. Just again, the nature. It's it's ten fifty nine. So this is <laughs> this is like something I could do a three hour show on. But when people become really interested in someone who you know, for most of the country, 
three months ago, did not know who Caitlin Clark was. So this is what happens. You know, Michael Jordan was a different set of circumstances. Tiger Woods, a different set of circumstances. So she's thrust into the cultural zeitgeist that transcends sports. And so people are like, who is this? What is she doing? Why is she such a big deal? Why am I watching women's college basketball when I never had done so before? Oh, I want to find out more about her. And then inevitably, media then sees there's interest. Well, now the media is catering to the interest as opposed to what the story is. And so then you need to find the dissenting opinion because the dissenting and extreme opinion is the one that is going to get the attention. And therefore that is the person who gets the clicks slash the dollars. And that is the game we play. And it's a game that I personally don't really enjoy, but that's how this happens in my opinion. Time for us to go. Uh, BK and Ferrario are up next for Jackson Burkett. I'm Tim McKernan. This has been Balloon Party on one on ESPN. Hey, this is Tim McCurden for the Bath Authority. If your bath or shower is old, outdated, has mold, mildew, broken tiles, you got to call the good people at the Bath Authority. The Bath Authority provides the highest quality bathroom remodeling products along with a world-class customer experience. Their modern, durable tubs and showers are designed with an exclusive high-tech power.